All right, in this video, we're going to go over more on splicing out of introns and sort of gluing the exons together of mRNAs. Okay, in the previous video, we talked about group one and group two introns, which are part of self splicing RNAs, meaning they do not require any kind of proteins to function. In contrast, in this video, we're going to talk about a different kind of splicing that is not self splicing. It is dependent on proteins, and the proteins are going to assemble into a complex called a spliceosome. And they're going to have the, the same net effect, particularly as the group 2 self-splicing introns. Spliceosomes are going to do something very similar, okay? And we will see how that works here. Now, you'll see here this SNRNP. Okay, what is an SNRNP? Those are called small nuclear ribonuclear proteins. It turns out that Mainly the three RNAs that we always talk about are mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. There are, of course, many other types of RNA, and one of them is called a small nuclear RNA, which is snRNA, small nuclear RNA. There are also proteins that combine and complex with this small nuclear RNA, and those proteins are called SNRPs. They're called small nuclear ribonuclear proteins. And it turns out there's a bunch of them given designations as like U1, U2, etc. up through U6, and these small nuclear ribonuclear proteins are going to complex into what's referred to as a spliceosome, and they will cut out the introns and glue the exons together. Let's talk about how the assembly occurs. Now they're given these designations like U1, U2, and so forth. So the first thing that's going to happen is U1 and U2 are going to complex at specific regions around the intron. Okay, it turns out that U1 is going to bind on a GU sequence on the very edge of the exon, basically at the interface of the exon and the intron on the left. U2 is going to bind on a specific A, and it turns out that that A, that adenosine, is the same A that we saw here that had the 2 prime OH that did the internal nucleophilic attack with the lariat formation. Okay, that's the same A. It has a free 2 prime hydroxyl group that can attack. It's just this one is going to be facilitated by proteins. Okay. Now, when we complex U1 and U2 together, it's going to require ATP hydrolysis. Okay? The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to have a trimeric protein come in, which is a complex of U4, U6, and U5. We're also going to have to hydrolyze ATP to get those to form. What these essentially do is they, they bind together to U1 and U2, but what they do is they bring U1 and U2 closer together. Okay, they're going to bring it closer together. So here you see U1 and U2 are further apart. They're more separated because the, line, the, ch the RNA chain is a lot more straightened out, although it's not completely straight. But U4, U6, and U5 are going to basically contract the RNA, and they're going to contract the intron around themselves to bring U1 and U2 closer together. The point of doing that is they're essentially trying to bring the 2 prime hydroxyl group of this A in close proximity to these two bases right here, the G and the U, just like we saw right here. Here's a G and the U. We want to bring this A 2 prime hydroxyl group really close to that because we're going to basically split them apart. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. All right. Now, again, we're going to hydrolyze ATP, but what that's going to do is release U1 and U4. What that does is it brings the at this A, this adenosine base, even closer to the exon-intron interface over here. And essentially what that does by bringing them in close enough proximity is it causes that adenosine 2 prime OH to actually react. Okay, and when it reacts, we get lariat formation right here. So we still have the lariat formation, all right? And after that, essentially the exons are going to be glued together. We're going to have this free three prime hydroxyl group of this exon attacks over here on this exon, releasing the lariat intron. Now, initially, the, those small nuclear ribonuclear proteins, the SNRPs, are still going to be attached to the lariat, but they're eventually going to dissociate and release the lariat. Once, they, once the spliceosome assembles, its function is pretty much identical to the group 2 self-splicing introns. Okay? It's identical. We get the lariat formation. The mechanism is the same. It's just that, for whatever reason, these RNAs, these introns, they don't have a secondary structure that favors this without proteins. They require these small nuclear ribonuclear proteins in order to catalyze the reaction. Okay? And they do, and they have a mechanism identical to what is seen in the group 2 self-splicing introns.
all right? And then we get the two exons ligated together, all right? So hopefully that process of spliceosome assembly and function makes a little bit of sense, all right? Make sure to like this video, and the next video we're going to go over um, the polyadenylation of the three prime end of mRNAs, okay? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.